around my story. I don't really like Indian movies because the actors are always overreacting and the movies are not logical at all. But this is just my personal opinion. However, I've discovered that there are stories stranger than Indian movies. Let me give you a real life example. I'll tell you a story about a young woman named Samantha. Samantha was a beautiful girl with blonde hair and green eyes. She lived with her grandmother after her parents died in a horrible car accident. The whole country read about it. She had many friends, and all the neighbors liked her. They considered her the most beautiful girl in town. Many had proposed to her, but she didn't care much for them. One day, Samantha was walking alone down the street after visiting one of her friends. Suddenly, she had an eerie feeling that someone was following her. She began running and crying for help. Her follower began running and stopped her. He was an ugly man, pointing a knife in her direction. He asked her to hand over her purse. She threw it at him and made a run for it. The man said wait and made to stop her, but another man appeared out of nowhere and punched the thief, who fell unconscious. The brave and good Samaritan picked up Samantha's purse and handed it to her. He was very handsome, with green eyes, soft hair, and an amazing smile. He escorted her back home, and she felt that he was her knight in shining armor. She went inside and hugged her grandmother tight, who was a little surprised but smiled. Samantha was so happy that she gently pulled her grandmother to her feet, and they whirled around and danced playfully. The very next day, she was surprised when she answered the doorbell. Steve, the tall, handsome man, was standing there, holding flowers. He proposed to her, and she said yes. Thus began their love story. Then one day, Samantha was standing in the kitchen preparing dinner. Steve and her grandmother were out, but they were supposed to be back soon. Samantha had everything ready, and she set the table. The house door opened, and Steve walked in. Samantha went to greet him, but she felt dizzy and fainted. Steve quickly took her to the hospital. The doctor congratulated Steve, saying that he was going to be a father. Steve was ecstatic, but Samantha was not. Instead, she was shocked and nervous. She said that she was too young to have kids, that she wasn't ready to be a mother. Steve was taken aback and said, But why? Don't you want him? Things were different from that point on. Samantha tried to get an abortion several times, but Steve was always stopping her. She couldn't accept it. She blamed Steve, but Steve couldn't understand her. In her seventh month of pregnancy, Samantha was with her grandmother at the supermarket when she saw a small boy run onto the road. Fearing he might get run over by a car, Samantha quickly pulled the boy off the road to safety. The boy's mother saw what happened and thanked Samantha, feeling so grateful and relieved. Samantha was crying at the moment and replied, No need to thank me. I'm going to be a mother like you soon. For the first time, she was beginning to feel real affection for the baby. Forgive me, she silently thought to herself. She tried to contact Steve many times to tell him that she had finally accepted. She was ready to become a mother, but he never responded. Finally, the day had come. Samantha went to the hospital to give birth. After the surgery, she was very tired. Nevertheless, when she woke up, she immediately asked for the baby. Her grandmother handed her the child. It was a daughter, and she was so beautiful. The nurse tried to take the baby out of her arms, but Samantha refused wanting to hold her for as long as she could. The next day, Samantha heard a big commotion, and she had a feeling of dread that something bad had just happened. It was confirmed when she saw her grandmother's face. She asked what had happened, and her grandmother told her that a child was missing and had apparently been kidnapped. Samantha's pale face slowly pleaded, Please don't tell me that it was my daughter. When her grandmother nodded, Samantha broke down and began crying and wailing in pain, the nurses tried to calm her down, and when she did, her grandmother came over to her and handed her a note. It had been found in her missing daughter's hospital crib. It was in Steve's handwriting. It simply said, If you don't want her, I do. Then Samantha fainted. For many years, she tried finding her baby, but couldn't. Steve and her daughter had vanished into thin air. She felt as if time had stopped for her, but Steve didn't feel that way. He raised their daughter into a beautiful young woman. He named her Margot. Whenever Margot asked about her mother, Steve would always tell her that her mother was dead. But he often told her stories about her mother and how much he had loved her. Margot's intuition, however, told her that her father wasn't being completely honest with her. 
and that he was hiding some big dark secret. One day, Steve fell ill unexpectedly. He called Margot to him and told her that he was very sick and felt that he was going to die soon. He said that he wanted to reveal a secret that he had long kept from her, that her mother was actually alive and that her name was Samantha. He told her that he had kidnapped her from the hospital at birth because her mother did not want a child. He regretted it and asked Margot to forgive him. He gave her Samantha's address, and soon after, he died. After his death, Margot decided to go looking for her mother. I am Margot, and I am now standing at my mother's address. At her front door, I cannot predict my mother's reaction when she answers the door, and I introduce myself as her daughter, but I'm going to hug her and tell her that I've missed her for so long. He was a dream. The future. Or so I thought but my love was cursed right from the start. Sounds a bit confusing, right? Let me explain. But first, I should probably introduce myself. I'm Carolyn. I was a dreamer. I dreamed of a good, warm, stable, successful life. I wanted a good job. And I wanted to travel around the world a bit with Helen. She was my best friend. We virtually shared the same dreams and hobbies and interests and lifestyles. We've been friends since we were kids. People often thought that we were sisters. I did too, in fact. She even got jealous if anyone tried to get close to me. Every day, Helen and I worked a little more towards our dreams. Once, when Helen and I were traveling with some of our friends, we had a problem with a hostess on the plane. A gentleman intervened and cleverly solved our problems. His name was Danny. I liked him. A lot. I thought about him often. But whenever I talked to Helen about him, she told me that he was not as amazing as I seemed to think he was. Coincidentally, I met him again at a party of a mutual friend. We talked together till daylight. I told Helen about our encounter, and she expressed her wishes that my love story would have a happy ending. I similarly told her that I hoped she would find the love of her life someday too. Everything would be okay, we figured. Then, one day, I received a letter in our mailbox. It was in weird handwriting as if the writer had written it with a trembling hand. I opened it curiously. It said that my love for Danny would become a curse if I didn't give him up and get him out of my life. What nonsense, I thought. Whose idea of a silly joke was this? I immediately called Danny and Helen to tell them about the letter. Danny laughed, but Helen was worried and suggested that I should be careful from now on. That same day, Danny had a horrible car accident, but fortunately he wasn't hurt. A detective investigating the case determined that his car brakes had been tampered with. In another incident, a car almost hit me, but it swerved away at the last minute. When I mentioned this incident to Danny, he tried to calm me down and told me to just forget about it. He gave me a beautiful bracelet as a present and proposed. We got engaged, and I couldn't have been happier. I wanted to show the bracelet to Helen, but somehow I seemed to have lost it. I couldn't find it anywhere. Anyway, when I told Helen about his proposal, she was thrilled for me. I spent days shopping for just the right wedding dress. I was so busy with preparations that I forgot all about the ominous letter. I went to the wedding hall early to make sure that everything was ready and prepared. Helen was helping me, and Danny kept calling me to make sure I was all right. Suddenly, the lights went out. I called out to Helen, worried that she might have tripped and fallen when the lights were out. When the lights came back on, Helen had fainted, and my dress had disappeared. I screamed to the ceiling, What do you want from me? Leave me alone! Suddenly, Danny appeared out of nowhere and asked me what had happened. I told him, then and there, that we must break off our engagement, otherwise the curse the letter mentioned might injure someone or cause someone to die. Then Helen came to and tried to calm me down. She told me to go to the car, and that she would get our stuff and follow me. I loved Danny and wanted to marry him, but now I was seriously worried that this curse threat might actually be real. Helen came back carrying a bag and a large suitcase and told Danny not to worry that she would drive me home and then call him to tell him that we had arrived safely. I was still crying, and Helen was trying to calm me down. When we arrived home, I noticed something strange. Helen was carrying a bag that was partially open and I glimpsed a piece of clothing stuffed into it. It looked exactly like my dress. 
I opened the bag and found that it was my dress. I confronted Helen and demanded to know how my missing dress ended up in her bag. I clearly caught her red-handed, and she was unable to answer coherently. I realized at that moment that the source of the so-called curse was Helen. Helen, I said, how dare you do this to me? I thought we were like sisters to each other. She replied icily, with a glare that I saw for the first time. She said that she fell in love with Danny just as I did, but he chose me instead of her, and that she hated me for it. She said she won him over and got him to love her instead. Then they both tried to scare me into calling off the wedding so that she and Danny could be together. There are no words to describe how I felt at the time. I replied in a similar tone. I told her that I don't ever want to see her again, or Danny. Neither of them mattered anymore. I never did see Helen or Danny after that day. I'm on a Caribbean island now, sipping on a cocktail. I read in the paper that Danny and Helen had announced their engagement. I'm thinking about what wedding present I should give them, as a surprise. Hi, my name is Laura. I'm 23 years old, and I teach art. I recently got married to the love of my life, Norman. I considered him my friend, my brother, my son, and my husband. We love to prank each other, even after we got married. For instance, one time, I turned off all the lights in the apartment, dressed up as a monster, and scared the living daylights out of him when he came back from the store. Another time, he damaged my car. I put mayonnaise on his toast. I did worry sometimes that our jokes might go too far. I mean, he did get really mad at me once. He stopped talking to me for two days, even though I apologized profusely many times. After that, our pranks sort of stopped. I figured our pranking days were over. About a month later, I returned home to find a letter on the floor. I opened it and read it. If you don't pay us a hundred thousand by Friday, we will kill Norman. I smiled. Norman was pranking me again. When he returned home, I hugged him and showed him his prank letter. He read it carefully, and his bro furrowed. He appeared seriously frightened and swore that this was not part of any prank. He told me that we needed to leave town as soon as possible. I asked him why, and he told me that before he married me, he had stolen a gold statue from a motorcycle gang. I asked him why he couldn't just return it with an apology, and he told me that the statue was worth a lot of money and could make us really wealthy. That night, an armed masked burglar broke into our apartment and confronted us with a gun. He said to Norman, Hello, Norman, long time no see. You need to choose between the statue or your wife. Choose now. Norman was hesitant. Then he steadfastly said, I can't give up the statue. Take my wife. The masked man turned towards me. He pointed the gun at me in a threatening manner. I was frantic. I was staring at Norman in shock. Suddenly, the masked man ripped off his mask. It was Keanu, Norman's brother.